Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at vapor liquid equilibrium for ideal mixtures using Raoult's law. And our goal is that you will be able to set up problems and solve them using this technique. So first, let's look at the qualitative behavior of a rat reasonably ideal mixture. It's not, well, it's OK. Uh, hexane plus triethylamine. And we have the three types of graphs we typically look at for vapor liquid equilibrium. We have the y versus x diagram, where we have the vapor mole fraction plotted against the liquid mole fraction. And we see that this has just a nice arch to it. It does not cross the y equal x line. The y equal x line is not part of the equilibrium. It's just simply drawn in for convenience. It's a tool that's useful for several uh, applications of the y-x data. But we also could look at the pressure versus the mole fraction. And here we're not separating out y and x because we do this for both the vapor phase and for the liquid phase. And the higher pressure side is the liquid side, the lower pressure side is the vapor side. The vapor side this means you have vapor and you're forming the first drop of liquid. And this is called the dew point line. The top line, you have liquid and you're forming the first bubble of vapor. And so it's called the bubble point line. If you plot temperature versus mole fraction, we end up again plotting both the liquid phase and the vapor phase on a single diagram. The higher pressures, excuse me, higher temperatures are going to create vapor, and the lower temperatures are going to create liquid. Now, for each of these, at a particular temperature or pressure, you're going to see that as you go across this, you're going to have both a liquid and a vapor. If you have a mixture fed at some point between these two curves, it will split into both the liquid phase and the vapor phase. And this is the part that we're trying to describe, is this region in here where I do have this two-phase split. Now we can take all of these diagrams, and technically it's just different combinations of all of the variables. So it is possible for us to draw this on a three-dimensional plot. And just to show you what that looks like here, so we have constant temperature, constant pressure, and constant mole fraction. That's a little harder to see. It's going across this direction, our planes of constant mole fraction. But this is how these all interrelate. So they are all similar diagrams, just different viewpoints of this three-dimensional surface. If we are considering vapor-liquid equilibrium, then we know that we've required that the fugacity for the vapor phase and the liquid phase for each species needs to be the same in the mixture. If we are looking at a simple mixture, then for the gas phase, I could simplify this using Lewis Randall's rule. For the liquid phase, I could use an activity coefficient model. If I combine those, I end up with this expression here. And we will be using this in just a little bit longer. But for now, let's take this now one step further. Let's take the pressure so low that the gas is virtually an ideal gas. And in that case, F sub I for the vapor could be approximated using the pressure of the system. If I have an ideal system, gamma will go to 1, and Fi for the liquid can be approximated using the uh, vapor pressure of the pure material. And so based on this, I end up with this simplification, which is known as Raoult's Law. Now it's going to be acceptable when I have molecules that are very much alike, very much of the same size, very similar in energy levels. We're going to improve upon this soon, but this is a way to get us started in the game of how to solve problems. When I use 
Rowlett's Law or other variations later. There are some other tools we're going to use, but they're all based on the fact that the sum of the compositions always adds to one, whether I'm talking about the liquid phase or the vapor phase. So we have some of the x's is one, the sum of the y's is one. If I do this, the sum of the partial pressures, well partial pressure is y times p, and p is common for all of them at equilibrium, t and p are fixed, so therefore p can be factored out, sum of y is just one. And so the sum of partial pressures is the total pressure. That allows me to then further state that the total pressure is the sum of the liquid compositions times the vapor pressures for each species. Or I could rearrange and solve for the sum of x is equal to 1 and get this expression. So these are kind of the tools that we can use to solve problems. There are four common categories of problems that we'll want to solve. One set says that I'm giving, given either liquid phase composition or the vapor phase composition. And then with that I should be given either the temperature or the pressure. Depending on which combination I have, I need to find the others of that variable set. Now I'm going to assume that we can find data for the vapor pressure as a function of temperature that I could look up, say, an Antoine's equation or something like that. And with that plus the given information, I can solve each of these four types of problems. Let's first look at the bubble point pressure. In this case, I'm looking for that pressure where the first bubble of vapor will be formed in a liquid. I am given the liquid phase composition and the temperatures. And I want to figure out what the bubble point pressure is and what the composition is of that vapor that forms. So first, you're just going to take that temperature and evaluate all the species vapor pressures. I can use that to estimate the pressure by summing up the mole fractions times the vapor pressures for the species. And then I can go into the formula for y using Rowlett's law and compute all of the vapor mole fractions. This is a pretty simple straightforward problem. Unfortunately, the others are going to require a bit of trial and error. So what about the dew point pressure? So instead of being given liquid composition, now I'm given vapor composition. So vapor composition and temperature are given. I want to find the pressure and the liquid phase composition. So what I need to do first is just guess what you think the pressure might be. I can tell you it's going to be somewhere in the range of the vapor pressures of the pures, so start with that. Then calculate what the liquid phase composition should be based on that total pressure. I know the temperature, so I can come up with vapor pressures. I know the vapor compositions. I can therefore calculate the liquid phase composition. Add all of those answers up. See if they equal 1. If it's equal to 1, then you're done. You've got the right choice. If it's less than 1, choose a larger pressure. If it's greater than 1, choose a smaller pressure. And repeat until you get something that's close enough to being equal to 1. The next type of problem is the bubble point temperature. In this case, I'm given liquid phase compositions and pressures. And I want to find the bubble point temperature and the vapor phase composition. Again, I'm going to have to do a trial and error technique. So I'll guess what that temperature should be. Use that to calculate vapor pressures, which allows me then to compute the y values for every species. Add those up, see if they're equal to 1. If they are, you're done. If not, you choose a higher temperature. And if they're greater than 1, if the sum is greater than 1, then you need to choose a lower temperature and repeat the process until you find the correct answer. And our final category is the dew point temperature. Here we're given vapor phase compositions and pressures and asked to find the dew point temperature and liquid phase composition. Following a very similar procedure to what we've been doing, you guess the temperature, 
use that to calculate vapor pressures. We're going to have to then use that to estimate the liquid phase composition, add all the liquid phase compositions up, and again, we choose our next step based on if the sum of the x's is less than 1. We want a lower temperature. If it's greater than 1, we want a higher temperature. Now this is a little bit more complicated because we're guessing temperature and then having to estimate vapor pressure based on that. But if with the aid of a computer, this also is not really all that challenging. So these are the four styles of problems, assuming an ideal mixture. In our next lesson, what we're going to do is relax the requirement of an ideal mixture, particularly for that liquid. And we're going to be looking at using activity coefficients with the Raoult's Law format, okay? And that's going to be using modified Raoult's Law. Thank you very much for your time.